Um, and what they found out is there is a constancy in how people, doesn't matter the decade and doesn't matter the culture, the country, they tend to associate um, pink, orange and red with sweet things and yellow and green to sour, salty is white, blue and grey, and bitter black, green as well, purple and brown. So um, there is an association between colour and taste. Regarding setting up our expectations, <coughs> right? And this is a nice test. Uh, this was done by Heston Blumenthal from the Fat Duck, you know, the, the Michelin chef. And. Okay, so he prepared this very Michelin starred salmon ice cream and gave it to people to taste and rate uh, saltiness and how pleasant it, it was. And when he just put the plate in front of them, well, it's pink. So people had this expectation of something sweet and they tried it and they hated it. Mm -hmm. And they said it's too salty. You can see it here. Uh, the ice cream, you know, without any label, uh, the, the, the pleasantness was very, very low, and it was saltier. But when he presented the same, the very same ice cream, now labeled food 386, well, there is just a random label, but it prevented people to build up expectations. You know, I have never tried food 386, so let me see what it tastes like. So it's another approach. He could break up the expectations. And wow, it's a salmon ice cream. It's so nice and so tasty. I love it. <laughs> and it's not salty. <coughs> yeah. So we need to be careful with those things, OK? Pink means sweet, unless you tell otherwise. So the sub-additive effect is dangerous. But it can also be positive, OK? Uh, but uh, it's necessary to have a um, market testing to see how people will perceive it because some novelty can be seen as dangerous. The brain sees that as harm, okay? If you taste something sweet and it's salty, maybe it's spoiled, you know, it's not supposed to, ta to taste that way. So it's a defense, it's a biological defense that we have. It's nice to play around, we like novelty, but uh, we need to be careful about it. Um, it's not only the color of the food, but also the tableware. So here we have a test where they served the same berry mousse in a white and a black plate. And when it was tasted, when it was tasted from the white plate, it was rated as uh, more intense, uh, sweeter, and people liked it more. And, well, the shape of the glass has an effect on the perception of flavor in wine and beer. So the bulbous cups tend to increase odor intensity, um, also, the complexity in wine and in beer, it was more intense. And with the flavors, more intense too. Okay. And this is a test where they, uh, they assessed if the environment would have an effect on uh, perception of flavor in uh, a whiskey. So they served the same whiskey to 441 participants. So they all had a sample of 60 ml of whiskey and they were taken to three different rooms drinking the same whiskey, but they didn't know about that. So these are, were the, th the three rooms, the garden room, this red booba room, and this woody room. And this what happened. 
uh, the green notes went up when people were drinking whiskey here, and the sweet notes went up when they were drinking in the booba room, and the woody notes went up when they were drinking in the woody room. Because they are setting up expectations, you know. So the attention is being channeled to that thing. If, and, and only if there is that note over there, the person can just um, take it out, pescar, I don't know how to say that in, in English, can fish it out of the food. Yeah? Okay. And there is also a cross mode of association between sound and taste. Uh, it has been done with lots of food and drinks, and usually lower pitches are associated with bitterness. Then the higher pitches notes are so associated with sweetness. Okay. Okay. I have been piloting it with coffee, and what I have seen so far is that it has an effect in the basic um, tastes but also in mouthfeel. The mouthfeel gets light with the high pitches notes and it gets heavy in the lower pitches notes. And sometimes in the same sip, people put the coffee in their mouth, they listen to one keeping, and then when they change the sound, the coffee changes in their mouths. So we are aware that it's the same coffee, but even though your brain cannot help feeling in in a way, it's just like an optical illusion. Even though that is not that color over there, you still see that color in that way, you know. Um, so now specialty coffee. Now that's my research area at the moment. Um, I am studying the effect of these external factors in the perception of flavor in specialty coffee, okay? External uh, factors as the cup, so shape of 